Uh, there we go. Kill Commander 616. Uh, let's take a look at this. Beast of Legend. Name unveiled. Affiliation of the Gods of War. Uh, but, and the Forgotten One. Oh, the Eternals. No wonder I don't fucking know him. Well, it's been killed by New Jim Crossing. Scheme. Not a lot of pictures of him. Oh, I actually meant the comics. I'm not even bothering to look at the uh, movie. It looks alright. The one picture they have of him is pretty menacing. <clears throat> Probably not. It's kind of the problem with big, uh, big universal characters like that. They don't use them all that often. Uh, let's see. So I think Sandy Brain. I, to be fair, that's every Marvel character. That really didn't narrow it down. <laughs> Ah, uh, damn. This one battled hair. Uh, you mean Hercules, Marvel. I think actually in there he's called Hercules. Which again, not honestly that surprising. Hercules has fought with a lot of people. Although still not as funny as Hercules' fight with Constrictor. Where then Hercules, uh... Where Hercules, or where Constrictor then sued the shit out of Hercules for using excessive force. And won! Not ah, bless the Marvel Universe. Shit, I don't know what to pick for this. Uh, shield. A break. No. Attack, shield, break. I don't know. His Rome name. Ah. I mean, to be fair, like, they've got some differences between them. I think it'll still be funnier, like, um... If I ever get around to playing uh, God of War 3, because I've never played it, I just know Hercules is in that game. It will be very funny, though. Uh, Master, you actually found a Mystic Code. Lucky us. Most Mystic Codes are infused with powerful special abilities referred to a code cast. You can always press square. Got it. Um, but it will be very funny to me playing God of War 3 and going, oh, these are all their Greek names. Okay, why is, Hercu why is Hercules not called Heracles then? <laughs> Which, I mean, the answer to that is they did it because Hercules is more recognizable than Heracles, probably thanks to the Disney movie, but... <laughs> was that Silver Age shenanigans? I definitely think that was that was more modern. That was like... At least in the 2000s, when Constrictor sued the shit out of, uh, uh, sued the shit out of, uh, Hercules. Alright, so I have Phoenix Scarf. Slightly Heal Servant. Cool. Take that. Let's see. Oh, we're still talking about Gilgamesh. I was talking about the Constrictor thing. Uh, yeah, he's referenced around. Uh, break. No. Attack break. I don't know. At least I can heal now, so that's a plus side. My ass is starting to hurt. I might switch chairs here in a bit. Ugh.
My goal for today, though, um, <clears throat> if I can, oh, if my ass allows me, Jesus Christ, I need a better seat, um, uh, is I want to get through round one today in Fade Extra before we end the stream. I don't know if we'll actually accomplish that, but... Okay, got the Kendo Sword, cool. It's a powerful enemy, that's why it didn't give any shits about us. Uh, I had to Google what the point was of completely all of Taiga's requests. Um, if you aren't aware, uh, doing Taiga's requests only, it, she adds stuff to your room, but only on a second playthrough do you fight the bonus boss, which is coincidentally why we're on a second playthrough, so I can fight the bonus boss. Thankfully, Triple C didn't make it to where you had to do that. Instead, Triple C made it. You had to be on the second playthrough to see the true ending. Which I guess isn't that bad. Nah. To be fair, though, the uh, the extra boss does give you a really good, useful uh, a build, a uh, useful item. The item basically makes you be invincible to any attack for one attack. So if you know someone's dropping a noble phantasm on you, it doesn't matter anymore. You're immune. But the problem is like that. It's like if you've done a second playthrough, then you really don't have any reason to want to come back and do a third playthrough unless you're one of those people who really like playing the game a lot. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, it's pretty good. It's just a shame that, you know, you have to beat the game twice to really get it. Like I said. Once you get it, it's like, it's cool that you have it, but when are you going to use it again? There we go, finally. You did play through with each character. True. I did let people decide, though. I asked if, uh, if I should use my... Uh, second playthrough equipment and uh they did say no so i am going through this basically with just just the equipment i find which is the reason i have like uh give me a second i'll get back to that statement so this is a trigger kutmini said that there are two per round so do not forget to obtain the second one obnoxious busy work complete that's uh a little too on the nose there but yeah it's the reason i'm only using like the phoenix scarf and the boys uniform instead of all this other I have. <laughs> All right. Well, with the trigger, uh, with the trigger skill out of the way, we can now return or with the trigger out of the way, we can go. We also have Taiga's request, so we're good. My tool. <laughs> I hate the jerk. I could turn the other cheek if he just meant me, but you're not weak. What level am I farming to? I don't know. To all become strong, I guess. I mean, right now it doesn't even matter. I can't access. I can't access the uh, the thing I need to do anything with my skills right now. So right now I'm just holding off till the fourth day. Afterwards, I don't know until I get bored. <laughs> because we're almost always famous, most people can recognize heroic spirit by their true name. 
That's the kind of information we need to gather tomorrow, Master. Then we can form a battle plan. Shinji Moto. Love the robot voice. I, it's just every time I see that, I can't help but think of it. My dear master, I mentioned this yesterday, but we have to know our enemy to defeat them. Investigating the campus with the eye of a sleuth every day will yield important clues. Once you enter the arena, you can't go back and investigate anything you missed, okay? People give things away when they talk, but they don't repeat themselves, so don't miss out. So make a habit of investigating campus and listening to others before entering the arena. Or have a website that plainly tells you exactly what you should be doing so that you don't miss anything. Clueless and Moonsaw glitching? Did it would not surprise me. I said a lot there. Did you catch it all? Yee. I knew you were paying attention, Master. Let's go investigate. Wow, it looks like that smarmy little punk and the girl in red are going at it already. This might be a good chance to learn more about that jerk. Let's go. I managed to track down Shinji. Looks like he's talking with someone right now. Have you been inside of the arena yet? Interesting place, isn't it? I thought it was amazing at first, but it's re it's really pretty primitive. It's like an ocean pulled from a story. I even saw a master who managed to summon Armstrong. Nano machine son? Sorry, I was just messing with you. I dig the sea theme. Overall, the game's pretty well done. What's this? You actually managed to summon a decent servant then? Asia's premier hacker, Shinji Mauto. You know, I may have had to take crap from you in the past, but this time the winner is me. God, I hope so. Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist as a servant would be the type of servant who would just walk around. It would basically pull in a Skandar, walk around all day, never use spirit form, and just like do everything to immerse themselves inside of like with like modern human technology and everything with her armada to back me up i'm invincible nothing you can do will be able to even touch me oh ho you must be pretty confident to give out information about your servant to an enemy mato it's about a dvd session my character is a dampier shadow sorcerer can you guess his name God, I hope it's D. Please tell me it's just D. Damn. That elegant voice can only be Rin Tosca's. Only she can crush Shinji's pride with a word. Michael Morbius. God fucking damn it! Man, I miss when Morbius wasn't a joke. Also, when he drank plasma instead of blood. But, you know, those were different times, too. <laughs> uh... You dare mock the living vampire. Does he more? He's permanently a vampire, no. Spider-Man the United States more than Sagla that hyped up too. I mean, he wasn't, but that was my first introduction to Morbius, and I was like, oh, this is cool. And then Marvel Avengers Alliance came around, was like, oh yeah, we're adding Morbius. And I'm like, oh, cool. Why does he look like a monster? Why is he talking about drinking people's blood? Doesn't he drink plasma? Looks at the Marvel Wiki. Oh, he is radically different. <laughs> oh. 
Honestly, I just kind of wish I just kind of wish they would stop trying to make those movies. Especially with like obscure fucking characters like Morbius. It's like don't nobody give a shit about Morbius. The most anyone gave a shit about him was when he was DLC for Ultimate Alliance 3. And that's because he was packed also together with fucking Punisher, Moon Knight. Who the fuck else was in that bundle? Punisher, Moon Knight, Morbius. Who the fuck was the fourth, fourth character? Who the fuck was the fourth character? That's gonna bother the shit out of me. Shinji's face goes bright red as he suddenly realizes how big of a mistake he just made. I mean, depends on which Dark Justice League. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, One-sided fights bore me, so think of this as a gift. B -b but is it really? I, I might just be lying. You might want to forget what I said. That is true. A single word would never expose a servant's true name after all. Constantine can be done good. I've seen him done good. I still think one of the best execute. I will give. I'll give. I'll give. Uh, this much. This much. Uh, it's all up in the. Uh, all up in the air about who's winning. Like the live action, bullshit. Well, I mean, Marvel's pretty much single handedly destroying the DC universe right now, mostly because they had a head start and, well, they pioneered it. You can argue about if they're still winning it or not, but honestly, I don't care. I'll give this much though. DC completely crushes the shit out of Marvel with animated movies and shit like that. The Tana isn't exactly what I'd call obscure. Maybe, but she's not exactly what you'd call mainstream either. Also, I didn't know they were making a Zatanna movie. Honestly, I've kind of checked out of superhero. Uh, honestly, I've kind of checked out of superhero movies in general, just because it's like, it's getting to a point where I, where it's not as bad as comics, but it's getting to that level of I have to see the others to understand all of them, and then the ones that are standalones, I have no interest in seeing, like Morbius or Venom. Sounds neat on paper, but I don't. I. I'm adamantly against making the Venom movies without Spider-Man. It just feels weird. <laughs> Only DC realized that when making their cinematic universe. Oh God. Honestly, I'm just gonna over like cinematic universes in, in a nutshell. I wanna go back to just being able to see a movie and it, enjoy that movie. Maybe have a sequel that spins into another movie. Oh, I'm sure it was good. I heard good things. I just don't care. To me, Venom was terrifying when he was torturing, like mentally torturing the shit out of Spider-Man, knowing his true identity and all of his friends and family. You will see us everywhere, even in your nightmares. I mean, to be fair, that's also because Venom's been passed around to like every character in the Marvel Universe and has gone through several character arcs of his own, going from like the anti-hero character, full on he, like getting rid of the Venom symbiote, becoming anti-Venom, and then somehow going back to being Venom, which I don't like. I'm going to be real. I like Venom as much as any other character, but nah. When Deadpool had him. Deadpool's had several symbiotes. He's worn Venom. He had Carnage at one point. I think very briefly. Uh, there was the time when he fought Carnage and he had... Uh, God, I hate trying to remember all their names. <sighs> Riot, Agony, Phage, Lasher attached to him. Or did he just have three of them and Lasher was still attached to the dog? I don't remember. I'm actually kind of surprised they're still alive. 
basically Deadpool fucked with or Deadpool fucked with Carnage's head so much that Carnage Carnage desperately sought control of his own life. He thought Deadpool was basically orchestrating everything to the point like Carnage put himself in prison and thought it was and did it because he was proving he was in control of his destiny. Venom was just kind of a space parasite thing, even it turns out he's the son of an ancient god of dark. I, god, I hate that so much. So much. It's like, I, my inner edgelord loves the design for that character, but god, I hate the retcon so hard. It's not the worst retcon. That goes to Captain Marvel. Deadpool, I think, would be fun to see. My problem with it, though, is I think they'll make him... Deadpool is a fun character, but I think too many writers fall back into his Wow, look, I'm Mimi Goofiness kind of character, but Deadpool being super serious is some of the best stuff ever. Like when he basically threatened to kill the X-Men because they wanted to murder Kid Apocalypse. Long story short, if you don't know, Apocalypse regressed into a child who understood the morality of what his future self would do and was kind of okay with any kind of punishment that came about, including killing him. But Deadpool adamantly has said that he has done a lot of shitty things in his life, but he will never fucking kill a kid and basically drew his guns on the uh, X-Men. However, a class that controls an armada and is tied to a ship will thin out the candidates some. How will she attack, bombardment, or a frontal assault? It'll definitely be physical in nature. Yeah. Well, I guess the only thing left for me to do is prepare a great many physical barriers. At least he has some morals. Some people had some morals, and then bad riders happen. I'm still really pissed. Loki, Cyclops was always one of my favorite X-Men. And then they fucking butchered him to hell and back. <laughs> Shinji's face goes from bright red to a terrifying shade of blue right before my eyes. Once you learn something about an enemy servant, you can begin to make plans to defeat them. If both sides are strong, but only one side plans, the results of the battle would be obvious. So that's what they mean by knowledge is power. I understand perfectly now. And now I know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Had hey, X-Men first class, they used Scott's brother instead of him. I mean, to be fair, that's because Scott was also supposed to be younger. Till way later in the comics. I mean, honestly, I don't think that's the least of, that. Honestly, I think that's the least offensive thing they did in that movie. The, the most offensive thing they did is the bullshittery of killing the character who like adapts to any kind of thing. Like even in the comics, that shit wouldn't have killed him or turned him to stone or whatever. That was just their lame excuse to get rid of him. Also, Azriel as a villain is weird, especially since most of his stuff is always tied to Mystique and Nightcrawler, but eh. Like, Azriel just walking about kind of defeats the entire purpose of his entire character. Oh, one more thing. I wonder if the Invincible Armada might be relevant to anything. I mean, others will start making references to that, right? Won't that just piss off your servant? Yay, I learned a thing. Well, whatever. Knowledge means nothing if you can't do anything with it. There's a good chance that you and I will never have to face each other. But honestly, I didn't watch First Class. I wasn't... I thought the movies were... Oh, the X-Men movies were all, were all right. I definitely think the first movie was probably the best. Second one was okay, but it was really kind of mad that they... Well, no, I wasn't. I liked the second one. It was okay, but it was definitely more of a Wolverine movie. And I... I thought the third one was all right, but as I got older, I started to not like it just because it felt like they killed off characters for no reason. Also, I hate that the third movie basically put it into people's minds that Juggernaut's a mutant. He's not. He's magically enhanced. The only reason he sides with a group of evil villains is because he hates his stepbrother that much.
And of course, he is heading in my direction. As I wasn't hiding, Shinji sees me right off. You... You weren't there the entire time, were you? Were you? <sighs> well, it's not like you can stop the invincible arm... It... I mean, my servant. Whatever. My victory is all but assured. Catch you later. Oh, and try not to disappoint me. Juggernaut's magical enhance? Yes. Juggernaut is powered by the Gem of Sidorak. Oh, is it now just in the helmet? Okay. I just knew it back when he had a giant magic crystal. Yeah, because uh, later on, actually, Colossus took the helmet and became the new Juggernaut. He was still a good guy, but he was basically the Juggernaut for that time. I mean, magic exists in all of, like, Marvel continuity. I mean, technically, if you want to, if you really want to break it down for, like, the X-Men thing, I think eventually they retconned Wanda's powers to be magic, because she, because they eventually retconned that her and Pietro are not mutants, they're mutates created by the High Evolutionary. Which TLDR on that is the high evolutionary. He wants to play super god. He wants to create a super advanced race that will just be perfect in every conceivable way. Shocker, he's failed every time. Seems that there are a great many masters who don't understand the stakes involved. Man, I just realized fucking Rin has like thigh high boots. I hate that little witch, but she's right about that punk not knowing how vital information is. But enough about his stupidity. Be sure that you search the arena and the campus for info. Remember, you can always count on my nose and ears to point you in the right direction. I think Quicksilver is. I don't know if they re-retcon that, but I know that was a retcon at one point. At one point, they were not mutants anymore. They were biological experiments by the high evolutionary. <laughs> I'm so happy. For love and great justice, let's get a ton of information on our foe. Be sure to check every nook and cranny of the arena and campus so you don't miss anything. Also, there might be vulnerable information that's available only on certain days, so stay sharp. Yes, I know. Thank you. All right. First day, day two. Let's talk about the triggers, victory condition. I think it's request. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay. Cool. Oh, thank God. I thought it crashed for a second. I was like, oh, sweet Jesus, no! We're just gonna... We're just gonna save right there. <laughs> About the Invincible Armada. The name given to the Spanish Navy during what is known as the Age of Exploration. With over 100,000 ton ships and 65,000 crew members, it almost subjugated all of England. Through the might of its navy, Spain was seen as the kingdom on which the sun will never set. Uh, heroic spirit who wields dual pistols. That makes me think of Billy the Kid, Calamity Jane. No, I'm sorry, that isn't right. His servant doesn't look much like an old West outlaw. But then what in the world could his servant's identity be? In any case, I have to return to my own investigation. I really don't know enough yet. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to leave it a like. And if you want to see more of my future content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And to stay up to date with all of the releases that come out daily, be sure to click that bell. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, why not check out my Patreon page? Link is down in the description. And as always, until the next video, hasta.